Hey everyone, this will be a compilation of all the content produced for TMNT Month. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Welcome back to the weekly shorts. This month, however, there'll be daily shorts, because this July is going to be an entire month of TMNT, and we're starting with some vintage stuff. The 90s were a wild time with toys, and TMNT set the stage for that with new figures holding new features. The feature for this foursome is all about that wacky action. Wind up mechanisms that do different things for each turtle. We'll start off with Wacky Action Sword Slice and Leonardo. He comes with a wacky whip, silly sword, and menacing mace. Despite coming with the same belt as the original Leonardo, there's no way for him to store these weapons, an issue the others will also have. To operate him, you wind him up using the pouch-shaped knob and let him loose. He's pretty neat. If you like him, you can find him on the aftermarket. Day 2 of TMNT Month, and today we're looking at Wacky Action Sewer Swimming Donatello. He comes with a floating sewer scuba jet and foot-seeking spear. Unlike the others, this figure can store one accessory on his back. Also unlike the others, you need something additional to get this figure's wacky action to properly show. And what's that? Water. Wind him up and put him in. Look at him go. Definitely a kid's favorite for bath time. He's neat, and I recommend him if you're starting a collection. Day 3 of TMNT Month, and we have wacky action rock and roll Michelangelo. He comes with sewer snakes, Swiss Army sewer cover, and nunchakus. One disturbing fact about these snakes is that they seem to be Gaboon Vipers. The heck kind of snakes are people dumping in New York sewers? Anyways, wind him up and he'll spin his right forearm. Because he's the party dude. He's a neat figure, so pick him up. Day 4 of TMNT Month as well as the 4th of July. Neat. This is Wacky Action Break Fighting Raphael. He comes with a garbage can gyro lid with turtle tools, rat bola, and anti-foot stars. You know, there's a lot of random animal abuse shown in these weapons. I'm starting to wonder who the villains actually are. Now, the way Raph is supposed to work is that you attach the garbage can to his back and press the button on his side to get him to spin. However, there's some issues here. One of which is because they used the original belt, it doesn't properly plug in without being moved or removed. The former causing a lot of friction by kids when they first got him, frying the mechanism. So, good luck finding a loose working one. Not that it's the kid's fault. Playmates just didn't think this through. If you want a complete set, feel free to pick him up. Day 5 of TMNT Month, and we're on a different action mechanic. I only have one of these so far, so don't expect the other three for the rest of the month. This is Head Droppin' Leonardo. He comes with a sewer cover cap, a garbage can scope, and a bullfrog slingshot. Again with the animal abuse. Anywho, his mechanic is that you push his head down into his body. And to have it pop back up, he squeezes his legs together. What's the purpose of this? Dopamine. And trust me, it works. He's neat, he's cheap, and he's fun. Pick him up on the aftermarket. Welcome to day six of TMNT Month. Today we're looking at a reissue of Sewer Sports Skateboard and Michelangelo. He comes with a pair of skates and a skateboard. If you flip the skateboard upside down and remove the wheels, it becomes dumbbells. I don't even want to know if that would really work on a skateboard, but it was the 90s and we didn't ask those questions. You may be able to find him at your local Target. It's now day seven of TMNT Month. Following Mikey yesterday, we now have Sewer Sports Slam Duncan Donatello, sporting Michael Jordan's number because it was the 90s. He comes with a turtle basketball and a garbage can rim. His mechanic is that he can toss the ball. Can I get it in, though? Nope. Oh well. Odd that he's called Slam Duncan Donatello when he just does free throws, though. You may be able to find him at your local Target. All right, so day eight of TMNT Month, and we're talking about Sewer Sports Touchdown Leonardo or TD Tossing Leonardo. Sorry for the low tech stuff, but we're currently in a hotel because a hurricane by the name of Beryl knocked out our power. Yes, I blame you for this. If you had killed her in the 90s, we wouldn't be having this problem. He comes with a helmet, a football tee that's shaped like a piece of pizza, because why not? A regular football, surprisingly, and what looks like the Nerf Vortex football, because it was the 90s. You can put either ball in his hand, pull his arm back, let go. I, uh, don't think he's going to be getting any touchdowns. Sorry, dude. I just don't think you got the arm for it. If you want him, you can find him, hopefully, at your local Target. We are now on day nine of TMNT Month, and I am still in the hotel because reasons. We have Sewer Sports Shell Kicking Raphael. Don't mind Vector Prime there. He's just watching like a weirdo. He comes with two different soccer balls and a makeshift net. All right, then. His special feature is if you hit a button on the back, go kick. Goal, I guess? Ah. I usually appreciate the molded details and paint applications on Vintage Turtles, but the uh, 
The mud was a bit much. Makes it look like he stepped in dog poop. If you want the soccer hooligan Raphael, you could probably find him at your local Target. Welcome back to day 10 of TMNT month. Sorry for the late upload I missed yesterday because I was tired. So right now we have Super 7's Leonardo, the Ultimates figure based on the original Playmates toy. He comes with an alternate head, comes with a signature pair of swords, a shogi, two hand knives, two shurikens, an open and closed turtle communicator, four different pairs of hands, a slice of pizza, and an additional weapons tree to emulate the one that he came with when uh, he was a little dude, back in the old days, the Mesozoic. Now, while I'm usually extremely harsh with Super 7, I mostly enjoy their vintage Ninja Turtle line, with one exception for Leonardo. You see, because his swords are painted and they're flexible, causes paint chip. And one thing I did notice when this thing did get chipped, apparently this is all clear plastic. I don't know what Brian was thinking at all. Here he is with his vintage counterpart. If you want to pick him up, a link will be in the description. Day 11 of TMNT month, and today we're talking about Michelangelo Ultimate from Super 7. He comes with an absolutely horrifying second head. This thing gives me nightmares. Comes with two chained nunchucks, two plastic chain flexible nunchucks, four pairs of hands, two shuriken, two hand knives, a shogi, a grappling hook, and his vintage TMNT Playmates weapon tree. Ooh. His final accessory is a box of pizza that cannot be closed with a slice of pizza in it. And frankly, I think I'd be more likely to trust an animatronic giving it to me. Seriously, look at this guy. He'd fit right in with Freddy and his other miscreants. This version of the party dude does look pretty good despite his limited articulation. If you want him, you can find him with the link in the description. Day 12 of TMNT month, and today we have Donatello from Super 7's Ultimates Lines. He does machines. He's got a secondary head for when people make fun of him for being a Mac user. He also comes with two bow staffs, four sets of hands, two hand knives, a shogi, a slice of pizza, an open and closed turtle communicator, the old school weapon tree, I'll show you his shuriken, but uh, I accidentally left him at home. I'm a professional. As I'm sure you all can surmise, the biggest issue with Donatello is the fact that his bow staffs aren't long enough. Typically, a bow staff should be about the size of the user, and Super 7 goofed on this. Because of course they did. Can't deny how good they look as a set, though. If you're wondering where Raphael is, I left him at home. I didn't feel like grabbing him. A different angry, angsty character to fill out Raphael's spot. It's an improvement anyways. Not that I don't love Raphael, but I really like Batman. If you're looking for Donnie, link's in the description. I'm Batman. Day 13 of TMNT month, and today we have Super 7 Ultimate Slash. And trust me, TMNT Slash is not something you wanted to have searched for in the 90s and early 2000s. That was an unpleasant experience. He comes with a secondary head, two grenades on his belt, one, two, three shuriken. He also comes with four pairs of hands, a cutlass, a mace, a flexible pair of nunchucks, a Chris sword, a Chris dagger, and something styled in his vintage weapon tree. And yes, most of his weapons are pink. Very secure in his sexuality. Here he is with the reissue of his vintage counterpart. And here he is in comparison with the Super 7 Ultimates Leonardo. As you can tell, he is a big, big boy. In fact, if you follow the link in the description, I'm pretty sure you can get him cheaper than the actual Turtle main cast themselves. So, um... Uh, if you want some TMNT Slash, go that way. Please don't go the other way. It is TMNT month, day 14. It's the day you face the Shredda. You can display him with a cloth robe that has a wired insert, or you can make the wrong decision and give him the plastic cape, where now it looks like he's from the Magic Mike show. Unless you're into that. That's my wife laughing. She knows what's up. He also comes with a secondary head that painted his eyebrows on the rim of the helmet, just like the vintage toy. I don't know why we needed this, but we did. He comes with a katana, three pairs of hands, two shuriken, two hand knives, and a vintage style weapon tree. Here he is with his vintage counterpart that, quite honestly, nobody liked. I'll link in the description if you want an in-scale shredder to finally fight your in-scale ninja turtles, or you can do what every child wanted instead. Have him fight Batman. And further prove that shredder makes bad decisions. Day 15 of TMNT month and we have Super 7 Ultimates, Krang. Here's a hands, his gun, an extra Krang for an open mouth because of what is articulation, and his little roller that has no actual wheels because we must skimp on quality. 
wheels have started coming off for Super 7's Ninja Turtles line because old Krang here isn't very good with articulation. I mean, for a dude with a gun, uh, his articulation shows he can only really hug you if you really want. I don't. The legs on his bubble walker are also super wobbly, but here he is with his vintage counterpart as well. So if you want him, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want the vintage one, you can get a reissue of him at Target. Day 16 of TMNT Month, and today we have Super 7's Bebop. He comes with an alternate head with a more pink snout to match his vintage toy counterpart. He comes with two pairs of hands, his signature drill gun, his knife, a copy of his vintage weapons tree, and he comes with a sort of garbage can lid shield, but uh, I don't remember where the rest of it went, and uh, it's too small for his big, chunky fingers. How Michael French got him to hold one, I don't know. Also of note, this gun is way too small for him, and I'll show you in a moment. Here it is compared to the vintage one. And yes, the Super 7 one's on the bottom. It is literally smaller than the vintage one. And here it is in his hand. As you can see, it doesn't even go to the bottom of his hand. Shooting this gun would not be fun. Here he is next to his vintage counterpart. If you want him, I'll leave a link in the description for him. Boink. A break in the pattern for day 17 of TMNT Month, we have Metalhead. I wonder what his favorite music is. Printed head you can barely snap on that has painted eyes because why be cool when you can be lame? He comes with three and a half pairs of hands, two grenades, two different forms of his cyber nunchuck, one he can hold, one that has to be attached to his arms because he likes wasting plastic his radar dish, his backpack, and a copy that's similar to his vintage weapons tree. Also, this hand is just unsettling. See, look at this thing. It looks like one of those parasites you see come out of a grasshopper. Also, these tubes were engineered very poorly, so if you bend them knees too much, it's going to snap, and then it's going to suck. Here he is with his vintage and very much so cooler counterpart, the original Metalhead, who is very shiny, and he is not. But if you want him, you can find a link for him in the description. Day 18 of TMNT Month, and we're going to rock. Steady. He comes with two pairs of hands, three grenades, a sewer city lid that I dare not try to put in his hands to use as a shield, a knife, his rifle, and a copy of his vintage weapons tree. And here he is alongside his vintage counterpart. If you want to pick up old Rocksteady here to round out your Ninja Turtle baddies, I do recommend him, although... After a while, I'd worry about them hips of his giving out and him going full grandpa mode. But if you want him and you like him, link for him is in the description as usual. Day 19 of TMNT Month, and we have the coolest of allies for the Ninja Turtles, Mondo Gecko. He comes, of course, with an alternate head. He also comes with four pairs of hands and his signature skateboard. I do like this very wild and crazy 90s dude. And here he is, hanging out with his vintage counterpart, a definite upgrade. I highly recommend him if you can get him, and a link for him will be in the description. When the turtles need backup underwater, they call their mighty mutanimal friend, Ray Filet. And that is who we're covering today on Day 20 of TMNT Month. The open mouth head. The pans. His buddy, Scarfish. His Ray Gill gun. His anchor. His vintage weapons tree. And, uh... Somebody else. This little lunatic is his full-time companion. His name is Fish Sticks. D don't don't tell Kanye. I I honestly don't know what Ray Filet would need with some dude who's willing to um, kablooey himself, but you know it's his life, not mine. Here he is now, alongside his vintage counterpart. If you would like Ray Filet here, a link for him will be in the description. But seriously, this little dude. Both of you need therapy. It is now day 21 of TMNT Month, and today we're covering Super 7 Ultimate's Ace Duck. Look, it was the 90s. I'm just proud of him for coming out about his sexuality then. He goes with an alternate head with a pilot hood and a cigarette or cigar in his mouth. I, I don't know why. Why did they do this? He also comes with five pairs of hands, two different bomber jackets, one that allows his wings and one that doesn't, a hat, a set of goggles, a pistol, a Tommy gun, six grenades, a bandolier, a set of wings, and a vintage weapons tree. Someone at Super 7 really liked Ace Duck. He has more accessories than literally any of the turtles. Vintage Ace Duck, and with all the love put into this one, I don't know if I'd be cool enough to have one, but with all that work put into him, he does have one major short sight, and that would be his tail feathers. If you move his waist in any way, shape, or form, it will pop off. You have to glue that sucker in if you want it to stay, and then hope for the best. 
If you want this avian atrocity, though, a link to him will be in the description as usual. We are continuing TMNT month today with Day 22, before NECA or Super 7, the undisputed king of the toitles was Playmates. It was 2012, and classics versions of 80s characters were in vogue. So, Playmates decided to throw their hat in the ring by making TMNT Classics, a 7-inch line that mashed the cartoon and original toy designs into a highly articulated figure line. It died the same year with six figures in its roster, but got reissued in two packs in 2022 with the two unreleased figures in tow. And that's what we're covering this week. We are, of course, starting with my favorite turtle, Leonardo. He comes with his twin swords and a stand. And that's it. Yeah, it's not much, but the articulation at the time was wild. Do that articulation in his fingers and toes. If you want him, a link for him is in the description. Day 23 of TMNT month, and today we're covering TMNT Classics Rocksteady from Playmates. He's a big old rhino dude. He comes with his rifle, his knife, his helmet, and a stand. Yes, I still have the elastic band holding his helmet on. I don't want to lose it. But here is where we're going to start seeing the main issue with the line. Scale. While both Leonardo and Rocksteady are 7 inches, the scale is still off. Leonardo should stand about 5 feet tall and Rocksteady about 6 feet, but the toys are the same size. Not much of an issue with these characters, but you'll see the problem later on. If you want him, a link to him is in the description. Day 24 of TMNT month, and we have Raphael from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with his twin size and a stand. I know, these aren't all that impressive now, but 12 years ago and only for $20, these were pretty neat. If you want this rude but cool guy, a link to him is in the description. Day 25 of TMNT month, and we have the Triceraton from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with a pair of guns and a stand. This guy is also completely inspired by his original Playmates toy. But it's also where we start to see the scale having major issues. And all I have to do to show that is to put him next to his two-pack mate. Yeah, this dude is supposed to be massive, but this is what he is now. Guess he was the runt of the group. Oh well. If you want this tiny Triceratops, feel free to get him with the link in the description. Day 26 of TMNT month, and we have Michelangelo from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with two pair of nunchaku and his stand. Despite being the party dude, they sure made him look like he's 100% done with everything. Lord. If you want the disgruntled party dude, a link to him will be in the description. Day 27 of TMNT month, and we have Bebop from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with his drill gun and a stand. Kinda surprised that's all he has, honestly. No knife, no garbage can lid, just the drill gun. Okay. If you want Pig Boy, a link to him will be in the description. Day 28 of TMNT month, and we have Donatello from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with his bow staff and a stand. And like a true ninja, he can see multiple enemies from all directions. If you like this angry looking machine tinkerer, a link to him will be in the description. Day 29 of TMNT month, and we have the Shredder from the TMNT Classics line from Playmates. He comes with a sword, a shogi, a pair of hand knives, and a stand. Why did he come with so many accessories? Well, we'll get into that shortly. What's really odd is that this figure stand has the foot logo from the 2003 series instead of the 80 series. Who made this decision? Why? Speaking of decisions, I'm guessing the reason he has so many weapons is because he is tiny compared to the turtles. Seriously, look at this. Shredder is in for a bad time here. But hey, if you want him though, a link to him will be in the description. It's day 30 of TMNT month, and today we have something special. This is the NECA Tatsu from the TMNT movie line. This was just dropped on collectors out of nowhere with no announcement. See, Tatsu was played by well-known Kenjutsu master Toshihiro Obata. In the 90s, being in films like this was looked down upon by the martial arts community. So, no one thought Obata-sensei would give the rights to his likeness to be made for this line. Something must have changed though, since this is here now. He comes with two heads, a calm one and an angry one, a Hanya mask, three and a half pairs of hands, a discarded foot soldier mask, a closed and open fan, a shinai, and a katana with saya. This is a great figure, and I love the cloth goods and detail. You may be able to find one at your local Walmart. Hey there, I'm Lyle Convoy. It's TMNT month on the channel, and I figured I'd take the opportunity to review some of the more recent stuff and older stuff. Today, we're doing the latter. Released in 1992, this is Raphael's Muta Bike. Following after their mutatin' turtles, Playmates decided to make some transforming vehicles. This is one of them. But as I'm sure you've noticed, one of the tubes isn't there. That's because it needs to be repaired. 
So not only will you be seeing a review, but also a repair. Repair! Repair! I started out by using a pin vise, a hand drill, to drill a small hole at both the broken end of the tube and the location it's supposed to plug in. After that's done, I place a small sewing needle into the hole, and clip it to size, pushing the tubing onto it. And there we go. Good as new. That's not all I have to do though, I also need to apply stickers. Part of the fun of these older figures were always applying stickers. So while that plays, I'll tell you about when I got this as a kid. Granted, this isn't that specific toy, but you know what I mean. I can't remember everything, but for some reason in 1992, we were on the road with our parents at the time and were staying in a hotel. For some reason, my siblings and I were really distressed. So my old man decided to find the nearest store and pick up something for us. And for me, I got the Muta bike. It's a very silly thing, but it's fun. Now, with this vehicle stickered up and repaired, we can move on to... Arr! The sculpting on this is very good. It absolutely communicated that this is a type of dirt bike. The turtle shell details on both the seat and the tires are a nice touch too. I can't be remiss in mentioning Raphael's head on the tires, in case you didn't know who it belonged to. Older turtle vehicles had details and sculpting that made it look like it was actually cobbled together by junk parts you'd find lying around. But five years into the line and those details are mostly missing now. The only holdover from that is the toaster in the back. Which leads us to... It comes with two toaster pizzas, with toppings on both sides. Because why not? They can be stored very easily on the side of the toaster using this peg. It also comes with some sort of rubber band. It's not listed in the instructions its purpose, but other Turtle fans have told me it's to act as a seatbelt for the figure if you want it to. But you really don't need it. It rolls. Because it's a bike. You can also load the pizzas into the toaster and try to launch them with the mechanism, but it doesn't work that well. Seems to be kind of an afterthought. Alright, time for the main show here. Time to turn this bike into a gonzo glider. I'll go ahead and play the footage here. And there it is. Now, as goofy as this bike looks, it's pretty snug. The tabs at the top for the glider wings aren't the strongest, so just keep an eye on them when you fiddle with it. It's not the most functional in design compared to a real glider, but it sure is neat as a toy. I love this vehicle. It's goofy, fun, and had a lot of play value as a kid. I got this for around $40 on eBay, and that's where you'll have to go if you want to get one on your own. Unless you're lucky and find it at a local toy show. I will say, though, that there's a few pain points you'll need to keep an eye open for when you buy it on secondhand market. First, make sure the tubes at the front are intact, or at least able to be repaired easily. There's also the propellers in the back of the glider. The plastic is thin and prone to breaking. So keep this in mind. Thanks for joining me for this review. Hey everyone, Lyo Convoy here. I said in the last review that I'd be talking about things from the past and the present. And this one is a bit of both. This is the Wacky Action Toilet Taxi reissue from Playmates. Originally released in 1990, this is a smaller vehicle the Turtles could use. One of the many things I like about the original toy line is that they released multiple vehicles at different price points. So if you couldn't afford the party wagon, you could always get this. I don't often talk about the packaging on this channel, but I'll make an exception here. See, the box art here has been altered from the original. The original just had Leonardo on it, but for this new one, Donatello instead because he's an exclusive figure for this release. Let's assemble this and apply the stickers.
And here we are. Arc! Let's start with this exclusive Donatello. He comes with a newly molded head with a helmet, and his hands are painted gray like their gloves. He doesn't come with any accessories, but he's fine as a general figure. Moving on to the toilet taxi, you'll start to see the stuff I mentioned about the earlier vehicles from my last review. It looks like it was cobbled together out of random junk. And that's a good thing. In fact, it gives us a rundown that'll walk you all through. We have the shower head foot detection device, the good guy pennant pipe, emergency flush switch, toilet paper mud flaps, turtle shell armored fenders, turtle gas pipes, sewer cover tires, turtle grimace dumper bumper, pulsating plunger headlights, sewer sink steering wheel, detachable bowl blaster, and a sanitized turtle sewer seat. These items are all very well sculpted and painted. Fantastic. Don, of course, moves like its vintage version, so I shouldn't really need to go over that. And the toilet taxi doesn't so much have articulation as it does its wacky action feature. Pull it back and watch it roll forward while the plungers move to knock enemies aside. Dang blasted! What's going on? Literally the only problem I have here is that the figure can't actually sit on the seat. He just kind of... hovers there. So the seatbelt was a good decision to have included. I love this vehicle. Loved it as a kid, and love it now. It's a perfect, low-cost vehicle that combines fun and function. The fact that the gun can detach is both a plus and a minus. A plus in the sense that it can be used independently, but a minus in the sense that it might be missing on vintage examples if you want to find one. If you're looking for the vintage one, you can find them on eBay for various prices. But if you're fine with the reissue, you can find it at your local Target. I'll see if I can link it in the description. But that's it for this review. Tell me what you think in the comments. Hi there, I'm Lyo Convoy and it's TMNT Month. While the channel has been doing daily shorts, I didn't want to let the month go without more long-form reviews. So today, we're looking at the original sketch concept TMNT figures from Playmates. Back before the Turtles were the worldwide success that they are now, they were just concept sketches on paper between Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. And these figures are a representation of those in plastic. Do they hold up? Are they accurate to the art? Let's find out. All the turtle figures are the same, so we'll just show off the articulation on one, and it'll demonstrate how they all can move. The head can move 360, as well as forward this far. The arms can move up this far and rotate 360 at the shoulder. Elbows pivot 90 degrees and can rotate 360 at the elbow. The wrist can move 360. Legs can move out this far and rotates 360 at the thigh. The knees pivot at 90 degrees and rotate 360. Arc! They're sculpted pretty well and I haven't seen any paint issues on mine so far. So good. Let's do this in order. Leonardo comes with two swords with scabbards that plug onto his back, a set piece, and a piece of card art that each turtle comes with alongside an ooze canister that props it up. I have my issues, but we'll go over them later. Donatello is next, and he comes with a signature bow staff that you can store on his back. And a set piece. Now we have Raphael, who comes with a sword and scabbard that plugs onto his back, a pair of scythes that you can store on his belt, and a set piece. Finally, we have Michelangelo. He comes with two pairs of nunchakus that can be stored on his wrists, and two set pieces. And here's how they all look with all the pieces put together, and posed as accurately to the art as possible. They don't look bad as a set at all. At least I don't think so. This, however, means we need to move on to... Dang blasted! What's going on? Now, I'm going to be a bit anal here, as I'm sure all of you expect of this channel. The way I'll do it is first taking the card art and coloring it to match the figures. There we go. So here's where we get into the issues. These figures are all supposed to be representations of this early artwork, a concept I genuinely love. But do they actually stack up? Let's go by the numbers. With Leonardo, the issue starts with the sculpt itself. It's not quite proportional. On top of that, the articulation isn't sufficient to get him properly into the Jodan no Kamae he's depicted with in the art. The biggest issue, though, are his weapons. Even in his early art, Leonardo is depicted with a pair of katana. However, the toy sculpt is closer to a nagimaki. Worse than that, they're not accurate to the art at all. I'm not sure what the sculptor was thinking when they made these sukas, but this is ridiculous. The scabbards aren't really all that accurate either. Donatello doesn't really have any overall issues, other than the fact that I find it odd that he has a belt when the art doesn't show one for him at all. However, I'm guessing that's for weapon storage, which I can forgive, 
because a turtle figure without weapon storage is a crime against nature. Now we get to Raphael. The problem with his sword is the same as Leo's because they're the same. Oddly enough, they got his size correct, though. Weird. The other issue, though, is that Raph has no way of holding the sign in his right hand like the art depicts. To a point, I can understand it, but I fear the lack of space between his fingers will eventually rub the paint off the size. Finally, we have Michelangelo. He's fine, honestly. I worry the clips that hold his chucks will snap over time, in fact, mine already have stress marks on it. But there's no way to fully know if they'll completely snap off, so just be careful. One thing I need to bring up about Wrath, though, comes about discussing the choice of colors for these figures. Now, I get it. Playmates made these, and they know that sticking them in the colors of the original Turtles would get our attention, even though the original Mirage Turtles are all the same color with red masks. I'm sure they'll be released in those colors eventually. Back to center, though, I noticed something when I picked up a truly vintage Raphael. Every re-release of a Raphael figure based on the original one is incorrect in color. And this isn't just my eyes here. Take a look. You have the reissue Raph from last year, this new Raph, the giant Raph from last year, as well as the storage shell reissue from last year. You see them here compared to the original vintage Raphael. You'll notice his green is much more saturated and vibrant. I don't know what's going on here, but I wanted to point it out. Time to get into... I think overall this is a neat set, and at $15 each is actually a pretty good deal. I like it when obscure stuff like this is put to plastic. And yes, I also ordered the NECA Sketch Turtles. I'll review them when they come in as well, as I'm interested in seeing if more accurate additional weapons will work with this set for a more accurate visual. The sad part of this is that it's a Target exclusive. But for my toy hunting friends, you'll find the DCPI for them in the description to ease your search for them. While they have their issues, I really do love them, and they make a great addition to your collection as well. What do you guys think of the figures, though? Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Hey there, I'm Lyo Convoy, and welcome to the end of TMNT Month with Day 31. That's right, it's not a short, it's a full review. I figured the best way to end this month would be with a review of these TMNT remastered figures from Playmates. Announced several months ago, these are the remastered versions of the original Ninja Turtle toys, allegedly with updated sculpts and articulation. So let's test that. They're all the same basic figures, so I'll go through one of them as far as articulation goes. The head moves 360, the arms raise this high and move 360 at the shoulder, the forearm spins 360 and bends at a 45 degree, the wrist also moves 360. The leg moves out this far and spins 360 at the hip, the calves also move 360 and the knees bend at a 90 degrees. Finally, the foot spins 360. Leonardo comes with his signature swords, two hand knives, two shuriken, a Klingon weapon, for some reason, and a few set pieces. Donatello comes with his bow staff, two hand knives, two shuriken, a weapon I can only assume was cobbled together by a crackhead, and some set pieces. Raphael comes with a pair of size, two hand knives, two shuriken, and a dwarf's dream weapon along with some set pieces. Finally, we have Michelangelo, who comes with two pairs of nunchaku, two hand knives, two shuriken, and a weird pair of kama held together with a cord. This isn't a kusarigama, but he also comes with a few set pieces. Speaking of the set pieces, they are interconnecting, but their random bits are modular and can be put anywhere. So just be aware of that. Arr! The painting and sculpting is pretty good for what they were trying to achieve, but I'll get into more of that when I get into... Dang blasted! What's going on? Okay, time to rip off the bandage here. Keep in mind, I'll try to be even-handed here with this criticism since these are only $13 each, and you do get quite a bit with them. However, sometimes it's about what you do with what you have instead of just what you have. The purpose of this line is to go back and redo the original Turtles to update them to modern standards. The problem is, these don't really accomplish that. The texture that they put on them already made them look gaudy. Combine that with the limited articulation and we've reached a problem. That problem being that the articulation here is the same as the articulation of the 2012 turtle figures. They don't even have a pivot of any sort at the wrist. And it's not that they couldn't do better. The Classics Turtles I reviewed this month had double joints in the knees and elbows. On top of that, even the Super 7 Turtles have better articulation, especially with the ankles. What even is this ankle cut? Ridiculous. And it's not like they didn't have the tooling budget for it. All those extra goofy weapons are brand new molds. They have no history in the brand that I could find. What they could have done is given us toy accurate weapons to go along with the ones we have here. 
Speaking of the weapons, they look familiar to you? They should. They're scaled-down versions of the Classics weapons. Literally. Look at them. This is going to be a problem in the long run, because the painted part of the weapons is what the turtles have to grip. The paint will wear off after a short time. This is not a prediction. This is a fact. My final points are that they somehow mixed up Donatello and Leonardo's head, and that they were told about this when the image is leaked. This is just lazy. A lot of people are complaining about the nose sizes, and I can understand why, but it doesn't bother me as much. They also can't take their belts off, which is lame. One final thing is actually related to the belts, or more specifically, one belt. See, redoing older stuff allows you to correct any possible mistakes the original had. For Donnie here, he always had that weird pocket on his belt, and no one knew why it was there as none of the weapons fit. I just stuck a Valiverse gun in mine, because Donnie gotta keep strapped. Anyways, the purpose for it was revealed in the Rad Plastic book. It's supposed to house the three-pronged knife, but the pocket was too small and put too close to the arm. So how did the Playmates modern version fix this? It didn't. Gee, thanks. Anyways, griping out of the way. Do I recommend them? Honestly, yeah, it's a good price point and not a bad start. Hopefully they'll redo them a bit later in the line since they announced at SDCC that they'll be continuing this line. Hopefully they'll listen to the community and revisit these soon. Also, I just want to say I'm relatively certain that this is the reason why Super 7 couldn't continue using Playmates designs. I'm pretty sure this was already in the works and that's why Nickelodeon told them no, so just food for thought. For the sake of comparison, here they are with their vintage counterparts. The Classics, and the Super 7 figures. If you want to pick these up, links to them will be in the description. What are your thoughts on these figures? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you all for joining me during Turtle Month. I think during August I'm just going to do stuff I want, so expect a lot of Thundercats nonsense. And maybe some drama. Who knows? If you want to support what I do, links to my Patreon and the channel memberships are in the description. I appreciate the support. You're also welcome to join the community Discord. That's it for now. Take care.